We plugged in the fiber and it works, which is a great intro to actually say we finished the job. We finished the job. Here we go. Yeah. There it <laughs> is, man. It's done. So you're seeing the vid the end result. Now I didn't do, I really have the time to do a time lapse. We talked about flying the drone around here and this is a cool warehouse, don't get me wrong, that we just wired for Wi-Fi. Uh, it's quite big. I'll leave the dimensions. I'll throw them on the screen or something because I don't have them handy right now. I'd say, I don't want to get it wrong, uh, but we cover this whole building in Wi-Fi. Now this is the full cycle and let's talk about this process. We talked about the sales videos. We talked about sales. The, this guy sold the job yep. here. Uh, and so this started as we had a customer uh, about a year ago, this same customer, one of the other warehouses, they wanted a bid and the bid was for fixing the Wi-Fi. But I right away seen the problem they were having was with the devices right. connecting to it, not with the Wi-Fi. So I said, I can't give you a proposal because it won't solve the problem. Here's your problem. And the guy goes, but I got two other proposals from other companies that also researched it. I said, well, I don't know. I'm just telling you it won't fix it. And after he did the follow the links of research I sent, he realized, hey, you're right. These <laughs> old devices won't roam properly because they don't have 802.11R. Right. So he appreciated the honesty, even though it turned into a no sale and it was a big project. Then the phone rings and uh, we hand it over to Brett and Brett takes care of this because it turns they out- They got new equipment. They, well, they bought a new warehouse. Yeah, they bought, well, they, <laughs> they, got, they, bought, they got a new warehouse here. And I, I do know the dimensions, all the way down to that end is 800 feet from where we're standing. Okay. This building is 400 feet wide. Oh, so he knows so the dimensions. It's, um, that's, it, it, it's a pretty large place that we put um, 46 wireless access, unified wireless access points inside and 12 surrounding the building um, Unify Pro Mesh uh, yeah. access points as well. Yeah, because they wanted Wi-Fi outside as well. Um, and the way it is, is all the Hilos are gonna have, uh, they have this, well, they got new ones now. Yeah. Uh, they have essentially like a tablet type system is what I would describe it. But the Hilos uh, have to, a constant connection to Wi-Fi. So as these trucks come in the dock and move out of the dock, uh, they need a constant connection. So when it comes to wireless planning and a heat map, it's actually pretty easy. You can just measure the distance between them and we know this place will be filled with racks. So all the Wi-Fi's are mounted pretty close to the ceiling because well, the racks are gonna go almost as high as the ceiling in here. So mm -hmm. we couldn't drop them down. Ideally you may, and I have seen people do this, you bring the Wi-Fi down from the ceiling a bit because uh, you can get it. The goal is always to have it closer, but when we know that the racks are gonna be close to ceiling height, uh, we don't want anything in the way or them, you know, the high-low as they pull things off there hitting it. So right. when it came to that part of the planning, um, that's how that part works. It's all going to be, uh, it's all installed actually, like I said, it's all finished, but they're all mounted at full ceiling height. And that's the reason why, because people question it. Now there's redundant fiber links that we didn't run. Good news is they were already here, but it turns out uh, some of the stuff just wasn't plugged in. When the previous people left, mm -hmm. they didn't just unplug it. They unplugged even the patch cables for the fiber. And one of them wasn't, we found a mislabel and we fixed it. It was yep. supposed to, well, we, do, we know what the customer thought it went and we found out where it actually went. Now they have it because they wanted not just fiber, they wanted us to plug them all in redundantly. So mm -hmm. um, it was up and running, but not redundantly up and running with each connection. So now every connection to every one of the IDFs is there. So I'm gonna switch over to... Um... So this project is actually, well, the project that I started in a warehouse is now done. This is being filmed about 40 days later. Now, that project got done, delivered, works. Uh, high lows are all attached to the Wi-Fi. Things are working. The warehouse has racks in it. It's not as empty as one in a video. Why am I following up 30 days later? Well, it's not just time, or well, almost 40 days later. It's not just time. It's also we didn't get approved for the next project until the first project worked. And something that's important to me on this channel is not that we just talk about planning something, but we talk about planning, deployment, did your plan work? That's a real important aspect when you're reviewing something is, yeah, I can put something on paper and say, well, that's really good. Uh, the marketing people said uh, this is the specs and the salespeople said this would work. But of course, once you get down to the engineering, did it work? And the answer is yes. And one of the things that first people are going to ask, and this is the second project, and we're going to talk about it here real quick, is Unify APC LRs. Why do we go with these versus HDs? Well, really simple. Uh, we needed a high density because when you have all these racks and cages put up, and the cages are uh, holding a lot of metal parts in them, so it's like a Gaylord style box. If you're not familiar with warehousing terms, they're like a pallet that's, uh, I forgot how many, it's three feet tall, but there's like a metal cage around. You may have seen things like this with also metal parts in there. And they just saturates uh, 
it sucks up all the Wi-Fi. It's like a Faraday cage almost. So we have a lot of these Wi-Fi's going up and down the rows, but there's not a lot of high lows. So you don't need the HD unifies, for example, because, well, the HDs are cool, but the, um, they're high density. These actually have plenty of range, and there's, like I said, not that many high lows in there. So that's why we went with these. On the outside ones, um, well, the pros aren't that much more expensive, so we went with these, and they have a good density, and they're going to have a guest network because uh, drivers and things like that, and the high lows do sometimes go outside and actually go into the trucks so these are placed around the docks now that first project done next project is another warehouse same company owns it now they have their own internal it so this is kind of our pre-deployment steps that happen first we get all these set up adopted and i know it looks kind of messy well it's temporary and they took over my studio for this because there wasn't enough room in the tech area uh, to put all of them and once they have that piece done and they have them all adopted upgraded planned we set them up on our internal controller then we're going to go and deploy these and we have i'm holding little labels in there we're going to put little stickers on each one so this one says like uh mesh pro 16 so i believe that's this there's 16 mesh pros here and 62 apclr so we're going to label all these and they're going to have a corresponding label inside the unify controller um and each one little sticker on there reasonably big but they're also 25 feet up there so it's going to be a little hard to see that's why all this where we have a schematic for this place and we're going to take that and mark as the contractors that we hand these to install and mount each one of these in the ceiling and run the wire to them uh, they mount and label each one so we know exactly where they are once all this is done and once we've verified this whole system up and running we've already mashed it to, based on their vlan settings their firewall settings because we're not doing a firewall for this particular project they have their own internal one then we pass it off to their controller. We've already done that with the other site. Once we had it up and running, they verified, did some testing. Great, it works. We we want a visibility that way as the contractors talk to us, hey, uh, make sure all of these units are on, make sure we can see each one of them. Then we do the site migration. And Unify makes this really easy. So we tie it to ours, then we pass it over to theirs. Now, the only real change we have to do is make sure their controller, because ours has already been tuned, you can look up for Unify how to do large deployment tuning. And it's run for us, not in the cloud key, but in an actual V because of the density and number of sites we have on there and the same thing with them they're going to have each one of their sites on there so you just have to make sure there's enough memory for the virtual machine and then inside the unify controller itself there's some tuning settings that unify recommends to increase you know a few timings and a few um um, some memory settings for the, I believe it's a Java virtual machine that it runs in and some MongoDB settings. Really simple, Unify's got this documented on there. Now the client really likes the Unify system because of the lack of license fees, et cetera. And, but someone's gonna point out, well, if you go with so, so and such so company, they'll next day air things with warranty and guarantees. Well, each one of these sites, they have a couple spares and we do this all the time. We will sell a site like this and then we have a couple spares that they'll keep sitting at the ready and they'll swap them out if any one of these goes bad. Now, have we seen Unifies go bad? Very, very rare. Switches? Yeah, we've seen a couple, but based on the number of deployments and the number of the high density that we do with them, it's actually pretty rare. And even more rare is how frequently we've had problems uh, with any of the access points indoor or outdoor they have rarely ever given us trouble um, i've seen a couple of them where we've had to unadopt readopt them but it one didn't require going up even on the ceiling it was something we were able to do completely remotely and it's really really random i think a firmware update once didn't work on one of the units if you design and sell these up properly and have properly spec'd all the wiring and things like that they are a very solid system but as many people point out, you don't get uh, top level support from Unify and things like that. Well, that's how the price comes lower. But we're our fair experience. I've actually never called support for as many as we've deployed. And we've done even larger deployments than this. This is actually, this is a good size one, but we've done ones that are more than about triple this and we've not had a problem it just comes down to planning and understanding how everything works and taking time to really understand the system and this where their internal it team didn't you know they they've looked at the unify they like the platform they had us contract to do design deployment make sure everything works and then hand it off to them because honestly babysitting wi-fi once it's all installed not too hard it's pretty easy to do and pretty easy to internally manage and that's what they want it was to internally manage all this uh, they also got a couple spare switches that they have their warehouses all four of them are all within 30 miles so they keep a couple in their uh, primary office it room that way if anything goes bad on uh, these are you know 24 and 40 port poes at different sites in different locations so no problem they can just go grab another 24 port off the shelf and throw it up in a place if there were one to go bad if there was some major problem um, and they have it already tied to their controller and even once you tie it to a controller and a site 
it's easy enough to move it to the site if there were a problem and even copy VLAN configs and things like that. Unify makes that really easy to do. Just like doing the site transfer. It's just a matter of grab that file, move it over, and it lives under controller. So this is the follow-up to it. Um, and for those wondering about the fiber part, uh, I, I don't know if I was as clear on the first part of video, but we, like I said, someone had, and someone's going to point out that all the little dust boots were missing. They were all in there. I just had to put them all back in. The previous person uh, had popped them out when the warehouse became empty and unoccupied from, I don't know if the company went out of business or what happened to them, before our client uh, purchased the warehouse and moved in. So we did reuse their fiber, and we just had to do a little bit of reconnecting on there. Not a big deal. But I thought that was a weird sticking point because, as I understood it, the people bidding against us on this particular project said, never reuse fiber and we we're like the fiber's up in the air it seems fine we did put the caveat on there and we did give them an estimate of if the fiber doesn't work it's going to be this much um, if we have to do any work on the fiber it's going to be this much uh, if it just works when we plug it in those are uh, not even charges you'll be charged and outside of having to stop out there and find out that somehow one of them was one plug off was pretty minor so we my staff uh, my contractors plugged it into the switch and one lit up and one didn't because they have redundant links across and uh, it just turns out there was a mislabel on uh, one of them it was really minor uh, it took longer to get the lift up than to really find the problem because it's quite a bit uh, of a lift to get up that high so this is it this is going to get labeled boxed up and move to the next project and for those asking can't you do more video on site this warehouse is live and running which means there's a lot of customer equipment in there not just the customer we're selling this for but the company does warehousing for other companies and on those boxes is the names of all those companies and they may or may not want some video and some guy on youtube doing it so this is one of those challenges we run into sometimes it's for legal reasons because of compliance when we do work with uh compliance level industries and we can't have video going in there you may pick up a phone call you may pick up something or when it's the case of this where the warehousing people then would have to probably get permission for their other vendors that use them and nah, that just creates a real awkward situation so it's not like we'll get any um, on-site video in the next project as well we did in the other one because the warehouse was just purchased and empty and vacant which now it's not vacant and full and uh, so that's kind of for those that always ask that question, why can't we do more on-site? It's it's a little tricky doing it. It's hard to be in some of those uh, areas and showing things because you know, customer privacy is important, and we don't want to have to have to deal with any legal ramifications or even cause any legal complications for any of our clients. Obviously, that's not good for business and anyone. So I'll leave you with that. Um, I'll leave links to this if you want to know where to get these. We have uh, stuff there down below, affiliate links if you want to help with the channel. Um, I didn't say at the beginning of the other video, but you know, it's always appreciated if you do, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, if you have questions, comments, uh, I'll link this over on the forum. Uh, that way there's a place to discuss it. I try to reply to the YouTube comments, but once the replies get nested, they get lost. That's why I tell people the forums is a better way to engage with me on things. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.